Should the Ravens sign Le'Veon Bell? Why didn't Benjamin Victor make the Ravens over Miles Boykin? With J.K. Dobbins being out for the season, does this put even more pressure on the Ravens passing game? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, a series where you can ask me any question you want to, and we answer it in the video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean. This is the very first episode of Questions from Subscribers that's happening after the 53-man roster. Now that we are into the regular season, we done made it, y'all. We done made it. But anyway, we got some great questions as we always do every single time. Without further ado, let's get into it. So now what I have to do is go through my phone and find some questions that some people sent to me about the Ravens. So this is the first one. Oh, so that's why you stopped. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh-huh, why did we uh, stop? All right. Our first question came from my guy Griff. He said, hey man, hope all is well. Just want your thoughts on this. In the wake of the J.K. Dobbins unfortunate news, how do you feel about how it went down? The O-line has been banged up and haven't been playing together long. We supposedly are supposed to be not showing our hand in the preseason, but in the final preseason game, they decided to try out a screen. Because you and most Ravens fans know we never run screens, which look poorly ran, I might add, and J.K. got hurt. I It, it happened. I, I don't think, like... When I look at this in hindsight, yeah, we all wish that J.K. would have never been out there and whatnot. We wish it, that it would have never happened, but it happened. And I don't like, I don't feel like, oh, the coaches, they made just such a bad decision. No, this was the very first time that all the starters were playing together. So they put, they trusted all those offensive linemen with Lamar Jackson out there. They trusted all those offensive linemen with uh, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards back there because they're their starters. So it happened. Yeah, if I think I think Bozeman, I think it was Bozeman that missed the block where the guy ended up tackling J.K. But it happens. I, I I don't feel like the coaching staff failed the Ravens or anything like that. It's just something that was. It, it was just an unfortunate circumstance. More, more um, texting from the guy you're talking about. Well, I just gotta look look it up. All right, that's one question. Yeah. The next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, Engraven, hope this email finds you well and all is good down there in Florida. Uh, appreciate it. He said, we're all heartbroken about the Dobbins injury. This was his year to really emerge as a top back in the league. I was expecting him to have a Pro Bowl type of year, 1,300 yards, 10 plus touchdowns. But with that being said, do you think we should bring in a familiar face in Le'Veon Bell? No. Uh, he could bring another element to this offense with his receiving ability. That's good. Uh, he may not be the player he used to be, but being in this Ravens running game could make him have a great year. And yes, he could be a problem in the locker room, but I think he could really fit with this team, especially with Gus. Uh, their games complement each other well, and they both rap as a side hustle. <laughs> what do you think? Take it easy. We under two weeks till the start of the ring season. I hope so. Um, but Le'Veon Bell, no, not at all. He is his style is just not a good fit for the Ravens at all. The way that he runs, he's too patient of a runner to be behind this Ravens offensive line. The way that they run the ball, you have to make quick, quick, quick decisions, and that's not Le'Veon Bell's style. So I will say no. Next question came from my boy Phil. He said, "My answer is no at bringing in another running back. The reason is because we may need to open a roster spot to keep seven wide receivers. Why? Because Bateman is recovering from groin surgery and is likely to miss the beginning of the season, and Hollywood is still dealing with the injury. Well, now he's healthy, so." That's good. That's actually great. Um, so I would like to see Benjamin Victor make the roster over Boykin due to his height and leaping advantage he's shown over DBs and safeties the last two weeks of the preseason. I thought that was going to happen. I I, um, I I really did. I thought that if they kept seven receivers, and you were spot on about that, um, if they kept seven receivers, I thought that Victor was for sure going to get in. Uh, but they do have him on a practice squad now. Now Boykin is on injury reserve, so maybe uh, those first couple of weeks and whatnot, uh, Victor will get the call up to the active roster um, since they they have him available now. Um, but with, uh, with with Boykin just making the roster, I guess Ravens just 
I think they really want to see what he can do with these new wide receiver coaches and with this new system that they well not brand new system but just since they're going to be implementing some new things we hope uh I think they just really they know Boykin got that potential they know he can do some stuff and I guess they didn't want to give up on him yet which I'm glad about all right next question came from my boy Chase he said he noticed in preseason that Devin Gray and Jake Verity were both wearing number 15 I thought only one person per team could wear each number just curious on this or is it just an oversight by them or is it just me being uneducated in this area hope this question finds you and your family well and as always keep it clean appreciate it Chase yeah it's just preseason preseason sometimes guys will have the same number but it doesn't happen in regular season everybody got to have their own thing regular season but preseason they can share numbers as we saw with a lot of guys next question came from my guy Raven Pryor he said, hey, Graven, it's your boy Raven Pryor. Sorry to send you a message so late, but I just stopped driving and didn't want to lose my thought that was in my head. Hey, that happens to me all the time, so I know exactly what you're going through. He said, I don't think we need any replacements at this time because Gus the Bus um, is the one who Ravens trust. That's why they paid him, and now the NFL will be in for a show. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, Gus Edwards, Tyson Williams, Justice Hill, uh, but I still think they'll end up signing somebody, especially since they said they aren't looking to sign anymore. Well, they said they didn't say that they said they trust the guys that they have um and last time they said that yeah we we remember what happened so i expect them to sign somebody i th i would be fine if they roll what they got um but I, I think what they'll do is just wait wait it out they'll go through week one against the raiders see how things go then uh and then they could sign somebody after that since their uh their salary wouldn't be guaranteed after week one Next question came from my guy Cody. He said, Hey, Graven, hope all is well. Been really enjoying the preseason streams. Appreciate it. Uh, my question from subscribers is, since it seems Patrick Queen is looking to break out again after already having an impressive rookie year, it seems he may become one of the best, if not the best, middle linebacker in the league. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down there, my friend. A little early for that. Got to pump the brakes. Hopefully you end up being right, but... Whoa. <laughs> he said if he ends up having a Hall of Fame career here in Baltimore, I was wondering if you think PQ's legacy in Baltimore would be diminished given the legacy Ray Lewis left behind. I fear that while we would all still adore PQ, at the end of the day, he will always still be compared to Ray Lewis, who few middle linebackers in history can hold a candle to. Thanks, much love, and stay safe. Well, of course. Of course, he, he, he's a middle linebacker for the Ravens. He's always going to be compared to Ray Lewis. A anybody that plays that position after him will always be compared to him. Daryl Smith, Danelle Ellaby, Bart Scott, uh, C.J. Mosley, Patrick Queen. Everybody's going to be compared to him. Uh, and it's not necessarily fair to them, but it is what it is. It's just like any free safety that we get, any true free safety that we get, they're going to be compared to Ed Reed. And that's that's definitely not fair to them because Ed Reed is yeah, but um it doesn't diminish it wouldn't diminish anything that Patrick Queen would do but yeah he, that comparison is always gonna be there and, and there's always gonna be an appreciation for both but with Ray Lewis with everything that he did for the team from jump and him being somebody that was on the team from jump from the start he'll always hold that extra special place uh, in Ravens fans' hearts. Next question came from my boy Anthony L. He said, hey, hope everything is well with you and the fam, especially in this unfortunate hurricane season. Uh, but not taking anything away from Gus and, of course, Lamar. But with J.K. out for the season, do you think that puts even more pressure on the passing game? Hmm. That is a really, really good question. Uh, if it puts more pressure on the passing game, I do think it does put a little bit more because... Um, with J.K., you knew what he could bring to the table, and he was about to bring even more to the table because last year with no offseason, with no preseason, with no training camp, you saw how he did, and he wasn't even a starter half the time. Uh, so this year he was getting ready to be a starter and be used a lot more and just be implemented into the offense that much more. Uh, but now it's just Gus and Tyson and Justice Hill, and it's, of course, no disrespect to those guys at all because we know that they're going to they gonna bring it too. They for sure going to bring it. Uh, but now when you lose a key piece of what your offense was planning, uh, somebody that your offense was planning to have heavily involved, you got to make adjustments. So uh, you lose one weapon, that means all the other weapons got to step up that much more. Uh, so with the passing game, yeah, I do think it does put a little extra pressure on the passing game. But what really, where it really matters is, and uh, what really makes it depend on if the passing game has more pressure or not is how the running backs perform. How Gus Edwards performs, well, even though we, we know Gus Edwards is going to do his thing, but how Tyson Williams performs now with the starters. Now he'll be going up against starters, but now he'll also be playing with starters too. 
how Justice Hill performs. So it all, the pressure just all depends on how everybody performs in JK's absence. Next question and the last question on this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. And, and this has just really been centered around uh, JK Dobbins and, and his him being lost for the season. But it came from my guy, uh, Enonic. Appreciate you, Enonic. Shout out to you, man. He said, hey, Engraven, I know it's been a minute. It has been. Uh, but I hope you and the family and Pookie are doing well. We are doing really good. Uh, my question is a simple one, so I'll get to it. In your opinion, will Greg Roman's offense change with the absence of J.K. in the backfield? Hard to see J.K. go down like that. Didn't look as bad as Boyle, but still gut-wrenching. Hope both players return healthy, strong, and continue playing like a Raven. Love the channel. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it, Enonic. So will this force Greg Roman's offense to change uh, with J.K. being out? Um, mm, I think Slightly. Slightly. Uh, because you obviously had plans, like similar, very similar to the last question. You obviously had plans on what you were gonna do with J.K. Dobbins. Um, you had different plays for him in mind, uh, just using him in different ways. You had it in mind, um, but now he's gone. So yeah, the offense will certainly change because. You're not going to use Gus Edwards the same way you would use a J.K. Dobbins. And with Tyson Williams, we're going to see how they use him too. So, yeah, things will definitely change. I don't think it's like, oh, man, we got to throw away everything and we got to start from scratch because it's not like that. It is a big blow. But, again, like we said before, it is a blow that they can withstand um, because they have guys in place. And then especially with Lamar being back there, every running back benefits off of him Big time because defense is so focused on him, they may lose interest in the running back. Or defense could fo focus on that running back, and then they end up losing him. So it works both ways. Uh, so I don't think the offense has to go through any like drastic changes or anything like that. But uh, it's certainly gonna uh, see some difference.